Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. Sorry, it's been quite a while since my last video. I was on the road doing public speaking, different stuff like that. But I'm back, baby. And I am ready to get into what I think is going to be a pretty interesting uh, video topic. We're going to be talking about types of stories. And I've come up with my own patented krill dog system of uh, sorting story types into seven different categories, ranging from plot is essential to plot is optional. Let's go ahead and dive in way over here on the left-hand side where I think plot is absolutely essential. We've got mystery. And uh, yeah, certainly when you're telling a mystery, it's all about the plot. Um, and as I get into each one of these different types of stories, giving you my best advice, I'm going to be working on an illustration from uh, Lost in Taiwan. My upcoming uh, graphic novel should be out on May 28th. I have a feeling it might actually get into the stores a little early. Uh, but we'll keep you posted about that uh, in the weeks ahead. In any case, let's talk about mysteries. You know, a mystery is a, is a puzzle in a way, right? The story is a puzzle that needs to be solved. And um, I would say that uh, that for me is the number one example of a story where you just you got to work out a plot a satisfying plot and very often that means starting with you know working out your ending as early in the process as possible uh, figuring out uh, who done it or whatever the solution to the mystery is knowing that in advance and then everything that you're doing is building towards that this one really you know this type of story is, uh, as I said, like a puzzle. It's like a construction, you know, and you are putting it together very carefully. And people who are enjoy a good mystery are people who enjoy a, a finely crafted plot uh, that has sort of little surprises along the way, all that stuff. To me, that means, you know, start out with an outline. I suppose you could just dive in and start writing it, but I feel like this one. Uh, the mystery. And, you know, as I go along, I'm going to mention whether I have done this type of story. And certainly I would say Brody's Ghost is um, my mystery story in the sense that uh, it involves the pursuit of a uh, serial killer. We don't know who he is. Um, and we don't know why he selects his uh, victims. And all of that you know, is uh, revealed at the end of the story in the classic mystery uh, fashion. So, yeah, of course, I had to work all that out. But let's see, has Krill Dog done one example of every one of these? Maybe, maybe not. But we'll go on to the next one, uh, in which plot remains pretty essential, I'd say, a love story. And uh, uh, as we get into the middle here, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's up to debate to what degree plot is essential or not. But uh, I think a love story uh, is, you know, it's all about a, uh, a relationship and um, it won't be a satisfying love story unless it is resolved in some way at the end. That doesn't mean it has to be a happy ending. Maybe they are incompatible and the love uh, doesn't work out, but you know, the story needs to come to some sort of a conclusion. And that involves plot, you know, working it out, I would say, knowing what it is you're heading toward. But I moved it just a notch over because it's not, you know, a love story is not that, that kind of like puzzle of the way that a mystery is. It doesn't have to be worked out in quite that level of you know, uh, making a, like a blueprint for a, <laughs> a complicated building or something. That's what I think mysteries feel like uh, a little bit. Um, and, of course, if you know my career, you know I did indeed do a love story called Minky Falls. And um, that one uh, was set in Japan. Uh, it had elements, some elements of mystery in it. Uh, it um, but, you know, it, at the heart of it was this relationship this love story and the, you know, people sum up a love story as boy meets girl, boy loses girl, and then I think they say boy gets girl or whatever, and the, you know, of course, that's an outdated uh, <laughs> way of putting it with the uh, gender uh, issues uh, involved. We probably don't want to talk about it in quite those terms uh, the way we used to, but uh, it seems to me it, it still holds this idea of the you show the first meeting, probably, uh, what they call the meet-cute, 
uh, where the two characters um, meet for the first time. There's that sort of the early flowering of the romance, and then inevitably there's something that comes along that screws things up and creates a seemingly insurmountable uh, barrier. And as I said, maybe it proves to be insurmountable, and, and that's your resolution. Uh, now with a romantic comedy or something like that, we tend to expect uh, that it's going to end happily. Uh, but even then, I think that that's not cut and dried. So let's keep on moving and find out what is the next one on the list. And I've put drama. Now this is probably the hardest to define. Uh, you know, what exactly is a drama? I think it tends to involve uh, human relationships. It may involve s social issues. Um, it, it's a little more amorphous, this one. And I've always felt with, like, movies that the drama is the hardest one to pull off because you are, you be, you're presenting yourself as doing a serious story, uh, almost in the tradition of Shakespeare or something. Uh, and um, so have I done something that could be called a drama? Hmm, good question. I think maybe My Last Summer with Cass is a little bit of a drama. It's like a friendship uh, drama. And, uh, yeah, as I said, this one's a little hard to uh, nail down, but I, I felt, as I st thought about what are the different types of uh, stories, that I definitely had to include that as a category. Uh, we know it when we see it, and uh, as I said, very often the, the winner of Best Picture <laughs> at the Oscars <laughs> very often is a uh, drama uh, of some kind. I think it almost every time involves human relationships. Uh, of some kind or another, like, like a family drama. I tend to imagine dramas having a, a cast of characters. Um, but certainly, you know, like My Last Summer of, with, uh, uh, with Cass is kind of a two-person drama. But I said a lot of them are like ensemble pieces where there are quite a number of characters. In any case... Let's move on to this next one. And I, as I talk about these things, I wonder if you uh, find that you have uh, done a story that fits into one of these categories. Of course, they blend together, right? As I said, you know, you could have uh, a love story that has uh, quite a lot of drama in it, um, you know, and uh, it, maybe there's a mystery going on as well, right? So these things are not cut and dried uh, separate categories that have to have walls between them. Far from it. Let's move on to the next one, which, you know, it comes in the middle of my scale, but as I said, it's a, a little more up to debate as to whether plot is necessary or not. Um, and I've gone for action-adventure right there in the middle. Um, I think we all know that with like a James Bond movie or something, when you get into a, a, a big action f uh, film, notoriously some of them have weird convoluted plots and people will walk out saying, yeah, you know, the plot was nothing much, but man, what a movie. It was so great. The action, right? And uh, certainly, I've, as time has gone on with things like John Wick and so forth, I feel like, I mean, I shouldn't speak because I haven't really watched watch this movie, but my impression is that it's all about the action, and if you're going to sit here nitpicking about the plot, uh, you are watching the wrong movie. Uh, in any case, um, I put that one right in the middle, and I think that kind of, I could stand by that as uh, something. And of course, you know, some uh, action movies have really great plots, and I, I would say ideally, um, almost all of these stories will benefit from you having worked out a nice plot of some kind until we get all the way down to uh, the uh, very end and, and I'll re reveal my choice for the the type of story that can have almost no plot at all. Um, but yeah, certainly action-adventure, you, you can have the full range of um, carefully plotted action movies versus ones that seem almost to have no plot at all and it's all about delivering action and, and as we go along you know, I think of these stories as needing to deliver something. Um, 
you know, a love story needs to deliver this feeling of romance, and you need to care about that relationship, right? So uh, each one of these stories, especially as we go down the list, they, they almost become delivery devices. Action adventure is delivering action. It needs to deliver excitement, uh, you know, or suspense. I probably should have added in there sus suspense, uh, you know, like the classic Hitchcock movies um, that have some action in them. Uh, I'm regretting now. I should have put in suspense because that sort of fits in there. And certainly mystery can be a part of those movies as well. Or stories, I should say. It's not only movies. Uh, in any case, let's see what happens when we go to this next one. I wonder if anyone can guess. It's horror I have put in this type of story. As I said, some of these are about delivering something, and I think horror is all about delivering scares. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's a little, in terms of, like, plot, again, uh, it could be, you know, beautifully plotted. So, uh, again, it's a, it, that the, this spectrum that I've come up with is a little imperfect in terms of uh, saying, oh, you know, horror movies have no plot or whatever. I guess what I'm saying is that uh, a horror movie can get away with having a very flimsy plot if the scares are fantastic. Um, but I certainly do not mean to imply, oh, people who make horror stories never concern themselves with plot. That is certainly not the case, and uh, you'll see some very tightly plotted and you know fascinating uh, stories in that regard. And I guess have I been talking about whether I've done them or not? I think uh, I need to backtrack a little to action um, and say that um, I think Brody's Ghost is a, a bit of an action story. It's not certainly does not constantly deliver action. That's why I think I, I put it a little more in the uh, mystery uh, realm. Because I, I think if someone went to that book thinking, oh, this is an action story, they'd be like, dude, there's no action in here at all. <laughs> I mean, there is. <laughs> Periodically, there's action in that story, but it's kind of not... I certainly don't see it as like a Bond movie type of thing where there's you know, set piece after set piece. And then what about the horror? Have I ever done horror? No, I don't think I have. And uh, maybe that uh, remains something on my bucket list. What does a horror story see look like when it's done by Mark Crilly? Watch this space. Uh, but I can tell you, I don't, <laughs> I don't have any, any immediate plans uh, to do a horror story. Uh, certainly within the next year or two. So... Sorry if that's a disappointment to any of you that are ho big horror fans and saying, Crilly, when are you finally going to do a horror story? Uh, I have enjoyed horror stories. I'm not against them, uh, to be sure, but um, it certainly it's, it doesn't come naturally to me, let's just say. It's not the first thing that pops into my head is something that I think I could do well. Let's just put it that way. And we're moving along. Before I get to my last two, before I reveal them, I'm going to kick it into time lapse, add a little more color, and then maybe when we come back I can um, touch things up with my beloved white watch. Okay, well, I think we have enough done uh, that I can jump back in with my last two uh, types of stories. wonder if anyone can guess what this one is. It's comedy, that's right. And I've put it way over uh, to the edge of plot is optional um, because it's delivering laughs. And we have all seen comedy movies where the whole point of it is just to make you laugh and who cares about the plot? Um, I think one of the best examples uh, of that is uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. If you've ever seen that movie, it is that is just a series of sketches, you know, comedy routines 
uh, that um, you could almost shuffle the order of them, I, I think, uh, to be honest. The, 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 um, it's all about the laughs. And I'm not saying that no comedies have plots. I'm saying, I'm saying as, uh, as I wrote, that it's optional provided you deliver those laughs. And the problem is, <laughs> when a movie fails to deliver the laughs, it presents itself as a comedy, and it has no decent plot, and then it's kind of nothing, right? Um, so it's a, that's a tall order. It's a, a high bar to clear. Uh, if you're going to do a sort of plotless comedy movie like the airplane uh, movies were a little bit like that uh, naked gun stuff uh, along those lines is really just it needs to be hilarious you really need to be able to deliver that um, but for sure a lot of beloved comedies have quite good plots in them um, but you know like if I think about my, one of my favorite comedies of all time is um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uh, that movie has a plot to it. You know, it's a little bit um, sort of rambling from thing to thing in the middle. Um, but there's certainly a, a setup and a resolution of a plot going on in that movie. And some very good acting, I would say. So, yeah, comedy can, as I said with a lot of these things, it can go um, right across from filled with plot to having total absence of plot, um, depending on who's behind it and what they're going for. And I suppose we're coming down to um, the very last one in which I have declared that plot is entirely optional. And uh, I suppose one or two of you have probably guessed this one. I describe it as slice of life. Uh, and this type of story really is what it says on the label. Slice of life, it's a portrait of daily life uh, of a certain person. It's a character study. Um, there is almost no plot at all uh, provided. It's the life that you're presenting is fascinating in and of itself. Um, that is one where you can get away with there being no plot. Now, uh, I should backtrack again and say about whether I have done things that fit into this. Uh, comedy, you know, my first uh, series was called uh, Akiko. That one, a big percentage of it was comedy. Um, but they had plots of a sort. <laughs> and so I suppose that's the one where, that's the out of all the things I've done, I feel like that's the one that is closest to being a comedy. Um, the characters were meant to be humorous, and in a way, even the action and stuff like that was not presented in a very serious way. It was just sort of like um, fun, fun for the whole family, that kind of thing. Um, but Slice of Life, interestingly enough, I think that uh, Lost in Taiwan comes a little close to that. Um, not to say that there's no plot, but it's not really about the plot so much. It's an experiential story in which I give you, as best I can, the experience of what it feels like to be in Taiwan and what kind of things you would see uh, or could see while you were there. And, um, yeah, it's, in a way, to me, it was sort of like, wow, I've never told a story like this before. Um, Slice of Life is, was, for me, very unfamiliar territory. Um, like I said, I don't think it's a pure Slice of Life story. Um, but one of the interesting things about it is that it takes place, I'll reveal this, it takes place over the course, most of it, over the course of a single day. And that was a fun thing to do um, for me as a storyteller. I'd never attempted to do that. Hour by hour, basically, you're seeing the events of this uh, protagonist's life, this guy over here. His name is Paul. Uh, and, you know, for now I'll leave it at that because I don't want to give away too much. We're still a couple of months away from the uh, release. But uh, So there you go. That's my little list. And I was thinking... There's probably an eighth category if you really want to be complete in terms of trying to <laughs> do justice to the types of stories out there. Uh, I would say over here even further uh, for the plot is uh, optional. 
we could just come up with a category that I would call experimental. Uh, and that would sort of encapsulate these like art films and different things like that that are really shattering the rules of storytelling, um, disorienting you on purpose as a uh, reader or viewer. Um, and so, yeah, that I think puts us hopefully uh, into a place where we've got something that, that uh, a category for everything. Uh, but let me know what you think. If uh, you think that I've missed out on something, some things like a western, for example, uh, I was thought I considered adding that. But you know, really, a western is almost like a location for in which all kinds of stories can take place. A love story. There could be a mystery set in the west. Um, the other thing that I had didn't put in here was nonfiction, um, autobiographical stuff. Of course, you know, even when you're wa watching a documentary, there is some storytelling going on, but it, uh, I didn't want to get into that. I felt that that was a separate category uh, in which life itself dictated the parameters of the story, you know, a, a, a biopic or whatever. Um, that is a different cat of fish, I, I would say, because uh, the story, yeah, the story is there. You've discovered it, and then you decide how you're going to shape uh the, this nonfiction material. Um, I'm really, with this video, trying to s speak exclusively about fiction, stories that you've made up. And I hope that you found this video interesting and useful. It might give you some ideas for what type of story you want to do next. Look at the options lying there in front of you. Uh, and depending on what your instincts are, if you're that kind of person who likes to build a, a, a you know, a clockwork mechanism, go for these mysteries. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun for you. If you're not a plot kind of person, you're more just like character, uh, slice of life. Uh, it, you got to have instincts for comedy, horror. These three, I think, are similar in a way of delivering. They're delivering something to uh, the reader or the uh, viewer in the case of movies. Um, I hope, indeed, that this uh, video was helpful for you in that regard, but I think it's time for me to go grab my books. So I can say thank you to those of you who have supported me by getting them like my last Summer with Cass, a drama, I dare say, uh, and The Drawing Lesson, a uh, graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, as well as The Comic Book Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to make comics. Also, have stories. I suppose they are dramas in their own way. Comedy dramas uh, might be the best way of putting that. But I think it is time for me to go ahead and lay down this brush. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon. <laughs>